Welcome to another episode of Bass Month. Today's creative offering is unusual as we combine piano tuning, installing a dampened system in the piano, and Indian cooking. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe below as there is more to come. Question one. Yeah. If you dare to answer. The most basic question. Do piano tuners use a strobe or their ears? What did you say? Do they use a tuner? I can't hear you, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it's a common, you know, there's a misconception that if you use a strobe or a, a meter, that you're not using your ear. It's only a an adjunct um, assistance. The ear is always the final guide. That's basically the bottom line. It's you. You have to listen to what you know the overtones that you're hearing. That's basically it. Like right now, I'm stretching the bass a little on the flat side because just so the overtones line up. Uh, another question. What's your favorite piano to tune? Well, each piano is so unique. Um, I mean, I tuned a Busendorf the other day. That was phenomenal. That was, uh, everything was so clear and clean. And uh, obviously really well, well adjusted and well built Steinways are always, uh, the best too, you know. So it's a, uh, but then again, any any piano can be tweaked up to its, <clears throat> you know, to its optimal condition by by voicing, tuning, um, even regulation has a to uh, effect on the tone. So it's all interrelated. What about that Italian brand that I that Fazioli? Yeah, have you run across them? Are they yeah. regional? Or are they the tune one? Uh, at the Tiller Center, uh, maybe a few years ago, it was actually for uh, uh, it was um, Herbie Herbie Hancock. Yeah, they brought it in for him because basically uh, he's he endorses that piano, so they had to find what to bring in for the, <laughs> at the Tiller Center. What's your take on them? <clears throat> Very clear and clean sound. They're, um, they're, uh, the tone is a little bit brighter and a little bit more projecting, let's say, than Steinway. It's not quite as round or mellow, but a very nice piano. Also a lot of money. <laughs> so you can see why he likes it. He's a little more rhythmical, funky player. Right. In other words, it's maybe a little more cutting and has a little more percussive uh, um, aspect to it if you want really it to cut through. You know? Yeah. We're doing this here today because this is a very big room. It's a dry room in the winter. Larry has given me advice to put a humidifier in. It's also next to the radiator, which we thought we put this big thing in the back here to uh, divert the heat from the radiator. And I guess it works at a certain level, but you know, Let's take care of our instrument. This is a Yamaha U3. Amazing piano. Sounds amazing in this big room. And uh, Larry's going to install it and tune the piano. He is. It's going to go under, under here, on the underside. Right. And it's good for high humidity and low humidity, right? Exactly. 
adds moisture in the winter when it's too dry, and it brings down the moisture in the summer when it's too damp. So it stabilizes the uh, soundboard underneath, which you can see under here. Is the soundboard. This is what resonates when when you play a note. This is a this is a company called Damp Chaser. This is actually a humidistat which senses the moisture in the air. If it's too damp, it turns on this heater bar which actually dries up the excess moisture. This is like a dehumidifier bar. So there's no water to empty like in a conventional dehumidifier. This works by evapor evaporating the moisture or drying up the moisture. If it's too dry, the humidistat turns on a humidifier tank. These little wicks here are draped over a small little heating bar. They heat, it heats up the wicks and it causes the water to evaporate under here to add moisture when it's too dry. So this system cycles continually between either the dehumidifier bar or the humidifier tank. So it's always, one or the other is always on 24-7, 365. So it keeps the relative humidity of the soundboard somewhere around 45% relative humidity. It, it might fluctuate a little bit, but not nearly as much as if you didn't have a system like this inside. So it really helps to stabilize the tuning. Excellent. Yeah. And, and I personally, I fill it up about every two weeks. It takes me less than five minutes right. to do it. It's like watering your plants. I got plants here, I watered the piano. That's it. It's a tube at the top here. This is the tube, it comes out like this. Put it off to the side, you put there's the thing container you put down the there. Tank on here, you fill this up, it goes in here like that. Fill it halfway. Tilt it, it goes in, runs down into the tank underneath. Just don't let anybody see you do it. They'll wonder why you're watering your piano. That's right. They might freak out. <laughs> Before we tune the piano, we have a tradition of preparing sacred Indian food. Mary, what do we got on the table? Last time you were here, you made sprouted doses. Yeah, this is, uh, this is going to be a, a cauliflower curry, a cauliflower and sweet pea curry inside, inside a dosa. And I'm just cutting up the cauliflower right now with the little bite-sized pieces. And uh, I'm also, if you notice, see these, this part here that wraps around yep. the plant? Don't throw that out. That's really good. You just cut it up into little bite-sized pieces. It's a, it's a green. It's the green part of the cauliflower. It's kind of like the uh, tops of beets. They're the best parts, and people throw them oh, out. Oh, beet beet greens are delicious. They're like very high in iron too. And what? Uh, let's talk about the spices. Are you uh, coming in from scratch here on the spices? Well, I got like this is called panch paran which is like, uh, it's a mixture of five different spices. I think it, it, it actually has, um, uh, fennel seed, um, onion seed, mustard seed, fenugreek seed, and cumin seed. Let's get a close up here if we can. Yeah. Now this, if you've never seen this before, these are called curry leaves. Oh, I love those. Yeah, they, they're a dollar in the Indian store. Yeah, and like Opna Bazaar. You can put them in, and they smell like curry. They've got a definitely, definitely a very distinct flavor and smell. And what else? Uh, cumin, of course, and uh, mustard well, seeds, of course. A little bit of extra mustard seed. In this jar is your powdered turmeric. And actually, I decided to bring some of this with me. This is actually, smell that, that's the coriander seed. Ah, right. Now, coriander, coriander seed is actually the seed from cilantro. Right. So, this is, this is also a nice little bunch of cilantro I just picked up, because you gotta have cilantro with the new. You gotta have a sharp knife when you're cooking, too. Yeah, we just sharpen the knives, and I express the fact that I, I'm afraid of sharp knives being a bass player. Right. It gives me an extra second to react, having a dull knife. Let's do the famous cooking shot directly down. 
like it's a cooking show. Now you see how those those um those onions, those that's a one whole Vidalia onion. You see how it's um a little bit charred? Yeah. Um I like doing that. It adds a little bit of uh it's almost burning, you know, it adds a little bit of um intensity to the flavor, nice like roasty kind of a flavor. Yes. Now I'm putting in some uh, chopped up that was fresh ginger. Now I'm probably going to just shut that off for now because I don't want that to cook anymore. And you're using coconut oil. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm going to do it like a little, I'm going to temper some spices here. Oh, do you have to have a mortar and pestle? Mm, no. You don't? I maybe. Have to look. You, you, you have probably have to have one. Oh, you would think. I'm going to look. I've got to do a deep dive in the cabinets. In lieu of not having a mortar and pedestal, I do not have a mortar and pedestal. So Larry is improvising. And what, what are you banging there? Seeds? Okay, uh, so now, I'm gonna, what are you doing over here? You cook the spices separate? Yeah, I'm temp I have to temper the spices. Temper? Temper. That means you have to put them in oil and get them to pop. Right. Anyway, this is a little bit messy doing it. Yeah, just way. make a mess. I, I don't care. Believe me. Oh, so you want them to pop. I like the little pan there. It's a cute pan. Yeah, it's a small little... Popping pan. Well, it's a... I got it for... Specifically for... Tempering spices. <laughs> There's a website for that in the back. Oh, yeah. The Tempered Spice. Probably. It's a website for everything. See, here's your towel back. Oh, and it has, it's a scent. I'll sleep on it tonight. Yeah, smell that. Mmm. See, now, here's a mixture of some other spices here. Right. I'm not over, over spicing it because, I mean, that's quite a bit of uh, cauliflower here. Yeah. But all I'm going to do right now, now, I'm actually also putting a little turmeric right on top. I like it to be, it, it'll turn that whole thing yellow so the turmeric. Yeah. Now, I'm just going to add a little bit of water to here because what's going to happen is the um, steam it. the cauliflower is going to steam Nice. I like this whole thing here. Yeah, it's a good. That's it's a nice perfect skillet. size. It's a high. It's like a high skillet kind of a thing. Now uh, you literally hear this stuff pop. Is it, is there mustard seeds in there? Yes. Yeah, it should start to pop like almost like uh, popcorn, but um, right, they pop all over the place. Yeah, I'm going to add a little bit more coconut oil. Well. I'm squeezing the juice of one lemon in here. These are very small lemons, so... How about the limes there? You want the limes? I'll use some... Um... What's nice about limes is there's no seeds. And here's a little secret. See, I'm going to take some lemon peel, right? Yep. Zest. Now, I'm going to chop that up into like little pieces. And this is going in with the curry. So the, le the zest has the lemon oil, which is very aromatic and, and it has its own kind of flavor. A little bit bitter, 
But it is good. Yeah, so that adds another dimension to the to the dish. You go like this and I'm throwing that in there. And what's nice is the the the, the turmeric makes everything yellow which looks lemony, even though it's turmeric, it looks yellow like a lemon, see? Yeah. Oh man. Now instead of rice, we're going to use a dosa, right? Is right. That... This is just going to go inside the dosa. Okay, now we're talking dosas. What right. do you got? Now, we got a pre-made mix. This is a pre-made mix. mix, but this is way too thick. See? Yeah. So what I'm, what I have to do is I'm adding a little water here, and right. let's see how this looks now. So you, you want a certain Consistency See for this. That's the trick. Yeah, now that's almost too thin. It may almost be actually, you know, no, because I'm stirring it well. All right, that's actually a good consistency. That's probably going to be enough for about five or six doses. Really? And these are small doses. See how they're they're not like the big, yeah. more super wide doses. So you will easily any eat them. any comments about your little dosa pan here? Where oh, that's a well seasoned. Uh, Cast iron pan. That's actually it's cast it's iron seems unusual. to be the best for. Yeah, I wrapped a sock around the handle, the little duct tape, so it doesn't. It's, it's like it's almost like a. Uh, what do you call it? Um, a built-in pot holder. Yeah. See now I'm mixing in the peas. See the peas? Got the peas. That's beautiful. Just looks beautiful. Part of the aesthetic of eating. Now you can throw it, all, all the things in here. Well, I've, I've done this once where I've even thrown in some hemp seeds for extra protein. I have hemp seeds. You do? See now I just threw in some hemp seed there. Now I'm going to mix that in. You won't even know it's there because it's going to blend in. You won't even see it. Right. The correct temperature is like it's got a sizzle, you know, it's got to be hot when it goes. Now, here's the thing, um, actually, they don't do it this way at the restaurant. They have a way of spreading it out and they do it on a much bigger surface. Yes, I've but seen I go that. like this. Now, I've seen that at a house of dosa. They got a special whole thing. So you're spreading it around, it's bubbling. Right. Now, And you're not picking up the sides like an omelet? No, or, not yet, not yet. In other words, what's going to happen, hopefully, sometimes what happens, this is a weird kind of phenomenon, but sometimes the first dose of sticks and it's hard to get off the pan and you got to like, in other words, the pan has to get seasoned a little bit. I see. But what sometimes happens now is it'll start to like raise along the edge. See, look at that, see? That's good. I'm just going to let this go a little bit longer before I flip it, but I can see right away, right away it's coming up. This is a well-seasoned pan. So I'm going to go like this, yeah. kind of work it around. Uh, each uh, Dosa restaurant seems to have their own uh, now, little style. See, too. now that it could have been done a little bit more before I flipped it. Right. But I'm try centering it there. Now it's going to kind of cook on the other side. Now a lot of times the dosa people, they don't, they only cook it on one side. Ah. I like to cook it on two sides. Right. And they have it down. They do it every day. They, they got it down. They have yeah. special equipment. They got the chef making it all day. Right. But, but for home, you're, you're in the ballpark. That's for sure. Right. Got a lot of cauliflower left. That's good.